The first station, Jesus is condemned to death. Jesus stands in the most human of places. He has already experienced profound solidarity with so many on this earth by being beaten and tortured to punishment by death. His commitment to entering our lives begins its final steps. He has said yes to God and placed his life in God's hands. We follow him in his final surrender and contemplate with reverence each place along the way as he is broken and given for us. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. As I view this scene, I become moved by both outrage and gratitude. I look at Jesus, his face, the crown of thorns, the blood, his clothes stuck to the wounds on his back. Pilate washes his hands of the whole affair. Jesus' hands are tied behind his back. This is for me, that I might be free, that I might have eternal life. As the journey begins, I ask to be with Jesus, to follow his journey. I express my love and thanks. The second station, Jesus carries his cross. Jesus is made to carry the cross on which he will die. It represents the weight of all our crosses, what he must have felt as he first took it upon his shoulders. With each step, he enters more deeply into our human experience. He walks in the path of human misery and suffering and experiences its crushing weight. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. I contemplate the wood of that cross. I imagine how heavy it is. I reflect upon all that it means that Jesus is carrying it. I look into his eyes. It's all there. This is for me, so I place myself with him in this journey, in its anguish, in his freedom and surrender, and the love that I must fill his heart. With sorrow and gratitude, I continue the journey. Moved by the power of his love, I am drawn to him and express my love in the words that come to me. The third station, Jesus falls the first time. The way is unbearable. Jesus falls under it. How could he enter our lives completely without surrendering to the crushing weight of the life of so many on this earth? He lays on the ground and knows the experience of weakness beneath unfair burdens. He feels the powerlessness of wondering if he will ever be able to continue. He is pulled up and made to continue. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. I stare at the weakness in his eyes. I can look at his whole body and see the exhaustion. As I behold him there on the ground, being roughly pulled up, I know forever how profoundly he understands my fatigue and my defeats. This is for me. In grief and gratitude, I want to let him remain there. As I watch him stand again and gain an inner strength, I accept his love and express my thanks. The fourth station, Jesus meets his mother. Jesus's path takes him to a powerful source of his strength to continue. All his life, his mother had taught him the meaning of the words, behold, the handmaid of the Lord. Now they look into each other's eyes, how pierced through her heart must be, how pained he must be to see her in tears. Now her grace filled, smiled, blesses his mission and stirs his heart to its depth. Love and trust in God bind them together. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. As I watch them in this place along the way, I contemplate the mystery of love's power to give strength. She knows the sorrow in every mother's heart who has lost a child to tragedy or violence. I look at the two of them very carefully and long for such love and such peace. This is for me, such incredible freedom, the availability of a servant. I find the words to express what is in my heart. 